Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching from Israel by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. Today we answer your letters and take a look at our new series, Eretz Israel, the Land of Israel. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif. And we want to be a one-stop shop for all things Jewish. For those that love the land and the people, we want to be a go-to source, yes? We are. And we also have a monthly periodical. There are actually two, but the first one I want to talk about is the Levitt Letter. I hope you're receiving it. It's something that goes out to our viewers monthly and all kinds of information about Israel. We write articles in there, but we also answer viewer mail. We love when you write in. We love when you say nice things, but we also love when you write in. So we have questions today for you, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. You have many hats. Mm, You're mm -hmm. a policeman. You teach uh, officers, right? And also you're a a pastor and a teacher. So today, put on your teacher glasses. Professor. Professor, Professor glasses, Hikes. that's it, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. Fire away. Here's the first question. In watching the series, Faith of Our Fathers, I was amazed to hear about all the Jewish people never mentioned in the founding of our nation. How involved were the Jews in the creation of the United States? First of all, my sister said much the same. A Jewish woman, uh, not doesn't have the same beliefs that I do. Uh, when I told her about the series and sent her a clip, she was like, wow, I had no idea. A lot of people are clueless of the Jewish contributions, which is one of the reasons why I was so glad to do the series and why I would commend people to acquire it and, um, and, and learn the story. Oh, even before uh, George Washington, Jews were involved in the early Americas, going back to Columbus, wow. who may well have been Jewish. We know that he had five Jewish people on his boats. We know that... Uh, I did not know that. Yes. <laughs> on, it was on the day when Columbus disembarked uh, to the New World, that was when the Alhambra Decree went into effect, which was a decree uh, by the Spanish crown that Jews had to leave the Iberian Peninsula by a certain point in time, and everybody was looking to get out of Dodge. Uh, there were uh, Jewish conquistadors uh, that came over to the New World uh, on the initial voyage. Even the maps that he used uh, cartography was something that, uh, that was a Semitic uh, discipline. The Europeans hadn't even discovered it yet. And because before the Europeans reconquered the Iberian Peninsula, when it was an Islamic holding, uh, there in Cordova, there was a great university, and geometry, map making, and all of that was all there. And those uh, that knowledge kind of uh, trickled down to the Jewish people and off to the new world. Its way. Did they mm -hmm. think it was a better life here for them? Why did, they, why did they make that journey to come to America? Well, Jews were told that, uh, that they had to either uh, get out of the Iberian Peninsula or convert and, and become Christians. The, uh, the, the uh, Inquisition was in effect, and people were running for their life. Some ran underground. Jewish people uh, ostensibly converted to Catholicism. They were called mm -hmm. conversos, or moranos was a disparaging term that was used. So ostensibly, on the surface, they practiced... Um, uh, they, 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 they practiced Catholicism, but then privately wow. they practiced uh, Judaism. Even in the early American experience, um, here in Texas, going from Galveston to Amarillo, south to Monterey, Mexico, this was uh, called Nueva León before it was America. And the province was governed by someone, Louis Carvajal, who was one of these Jews I've described. The Inquisition came over and killed him and over 100 members of his family. Two sons escaped, wow. went back to Europe. But there were a lot of Jews here in the New World. Was it sort, a sort of promised land where there would be religious 
freedom. Because again, from Spain, they're getting kicked out. The Jewish people, once again, are getting kicked out of their land. Yes. And in fact, there was uh, certain charter places like Jamaica that said explicitly that there was no religious litmus test. Going to the colonies in America, closer to the, when the Europeans are coming, uh, the, not the Southern Europeans, as in the Spaniards, but when the British and those that we know, uh, Puritans came here looking for a new world and religious freedoms, and Jews came along with. Actually, the first Jews into the new world uh, came from uh, South America, from Recife, Brazil. Uh, they came and uh, went to uh, New Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And they took residence there. There were 23 families that disembarked, and, and that think, was the beginning. I was going to say something we learned that we didn't know at all. And uh, before we come here to tape, our, tape the TV program, we get to watch all of your teaching. And we didn't realize that many of the Founding Fathers actually studied Hebrew. That is just something that we're not taught. We don't know that. Well. Hebrew was was part of education. The early clergy, the early universities picked on it first. Harvard and then Yale and then Princeton. Right. Uh, and to the extent the Founding Fathers studied at those places, they would have been influenced by it. Uh, but there were a lot of influences, things Jewish uh, intellectually, to be sure, as per the language. And there were influential Jewish people. I had to, in effect, in the series Faith of Our Fathers, even taper it down. I wanted David Barton to do the talking about the Founding Fathers and the document and the Christian origins. Mm -hmm. But truth be known, we could have done an entire series. You know, I got some bites in there a minute or two about different individuals in the series. We could have done a whole series on Jewish contributions Ooh, in early America. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that in the future. Here's a question. So back in the day, were, were they welcomed with open arms or was it a struggle? Well, people have prejudices, but they came here because there were freedoms. And uh, you, you can't get away from people's uh, private and sometimes made public verbal disbargements. But on the whole, Jews were able to be free and practice no, their the religion. The Puritans were running away from being oppressed and not being able to worship and follow what they wanted to religiously. Yes. So it kind of followed suit that, you know, I mean, let's look at uh, what is the, the plaque on Such of Liberty. We welcome all of you. Yes, and I mentioned in the series, that plaque, Bring Me Your Tired and Your Poor, right. was a Jewish woman who wrote that line. Right. That, uh, and in fact, and it was noted in the series previous that uh, the letter that George Washington wrote to uh, the, the Toro Synagogue up in New England, uh, therein he gave voice to the fact that we give no quarter to persecuting people on the basis of faith. And it is, you know, we hold these truths to be self-evident, uh, that all men are created equal, uh, that people are entitled to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness according to the dictates of their own conscience. That was part of uh, the American ethos, and of course that makes room for Jews in it. And Jews didn't just come here, Jews were contributors mm -hmm. to uh, what happened here, and it's a story that's oft untold. We would be wise to go back to that the theology and doctrine and thinking, I think. And in, instead of persecution, I mean, people are just so against now those of different beliefs. And it would be nice to go back to what our founding fathers wanted originally for this country, I think. Yes, and I think that's the beauty of our viewers, by the way. I mean, a Jewish person will watch uh, the programs to be sure. But when you look at Christian television, what goes out in the networks, a lot of these are Christian friends that have a love for things Jewish. And it speaks to a beauty in their heart and a kind of openness that they care about this kind of story and that they share to contribute to its ongoing telling. Uh, and that is America at its best, by the way, a kind of openness to mm -hmm. new people, new experiences, new things. We shouldn't have to be reminded of this, but guess what? Jesus was Jewish too. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> That's good. I know. We, it's we, all about we, Jesus. We, Surprise! We, we shouldn't have to be reminded <laughs> right. of that. In fact, uh, in, um, in medieval Europe, when they were doing crucifixes, uh, you know, if you look at a Protestant cross, it typically won't have Jesus on it. If you look at a high church cross, the crucifix, Jesus is on it. But, but uh, it's not just for modesty's sake that there's a loincloth over his midsection, his private parts. If you look at uh, medieval art, they weren't sheepish about showing 
you know, private parts. But a reason why they, they wanted to do that is not to advertise the fact that, that he was circumcised, that is, that he was a Hebrew. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of, no, let's, let's keep that I off the that. radar. Right. And people have long since forgotten and intentionally wanted to obscure uh, the Jewishness of Jesus. Tragic. But that's not what we're about here on Our Jewish Roots. No. We'll bring it right back. That's right. We have more questions. We'll be right back. Our resource this week, the series Joshua, More Than a Conqueror, on DVD. This eight program series reveals how Joshua went from spy to Moses' apprentice and then became the faithful leader of the Israelites during the conquest of the land of Canaan. With dramatic reenactments, Bible teaching from Dr. Seif, insight from Chaim Mailspin, music, and much more. Contact us and ask for your copy of the DVD series, Joshua, More Than a Conqueror. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. Arise, walk through the land, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Worship in the shadows of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Behold the land of the covenant. Just about weekly on our program, we say that traveling to Israel is the trip of a lifetime, and it really has been for us too. We would love for you to join us on a tour to Israel. We go both in the fall and the spring. All the information is right here on levitt.com. We are a television program, but we also are a ministry, and we are a tour company. We're many things. So we have this program. We have the tours. They're called Zola Tours. Levitt.com is the website for everything our ministry covers. Something else that we have, we do a monthly periodical called The Levitt Letter. It's completely free. You can sign up on our website. We have up-to-date information monthly about what really is happening in the land of Israel. No fake news goes out from our ministry. And something else that we have on there, we have letters from our viewers. So we would love for you that watch our program to write in, let us know your takeaways from the programs and also what they meant to you. Another thing that we do is we support the people in the land of Israel. Your donations, your monthly regular donations go to make this program possible, but also many, many ministries in the land. You know what? I think we're in our 40th year of this ministry. I can't believe it's been that long. We're so thankful to be a part of it. And we also just want to say thank you for supporting us that we're able to go to Israel, do our dramatic reenactments, send you, Dr. Seif, there many times you've been. To we, teach on location. How many times yes. have you been to Israel? 50 or so. Wow. When you get to that point, it's the or so. Could I, be. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't count. That's amazing. I just go. We still count. <laughs> and the dramatic reenactments are just, they're like Hollywood, really. Quality. I think it's the drama that's the genius of this organization, to tell you the truth. It's not the talking head. Uh, it's not me. Uh, it's, it's just, it's the way people can see it come to life, you know, that's just, and I, I hope to add something to it, but there are a number of ingredients here. It doesn't revolve around my person going there as the teacher, but it's great to do it with a, with a, with a group. Many things under our umbrella yes. Yes. of ministry, many places, and we get letters from our viewers, and you have one, are don't you, you? Are you ready for question you ready? number two? 
Go Dr. ahead. Sy? This is kind of a long one. Here we go. We know God blesses those countries who bless Israel. Do you think the religious liberty America offered to the original Jewish immigrants has anything to do with the success of our nation? Yes. And there's a variety of reasons for that. First of all, any people that's open to a brother from another mother, there's a kind of grace there and what that nation's all about that is only going to pay dividends in future generations as opposed to hating. But beyond that, certainly uh, in the seminal promise in early Genesis, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It's one of the more famous uh, texts in the Older Testament. That speaks to the fact there's a blessing that accrues. I want to add something to it. Just, it's not my own addition. That's Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I quote from uh, a few different Bibles when I work the program. Uh, when I'm working from a Hebrew Bible, I'm working with a Hebrew text and the Jewish Publication Society uh, version. Uh, but with this right here, I'm working with a version called The Tree of Life that was published by Baker Books. I served as the project manager for it. And we had a debate about, and there's some 50 or so individuals about what to do with uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. But, and it was a Christian woman, Helen Dallaire, who's an Old Testament professor at Denver Seminary, fell in love with the Jewish people, went and did a PhD at uh, Hebrew Union in Semitic languages, and then was asked to come there and teach people that are going to be rabbis the Hebrew language. Wow. She argued on the basis of the Hebrew in chapter 12, verse 2, where the Lord says, my heart's desire is to make of you into a great nation. Uh, it's, it is something effusive there. It's God's desire, his love, not just his will, not just some intellectual intentionality, mm. but it's an extension of the heart. And it's with that heartfelt comes this promise subsequent to it that I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. I think there's a blessing that accrues to individuals who bless the Jewish people. Some, by the way, may wish to take you up on the offer to support a ministry like this and others like it. But to be sure, those who endeavor to be a blessing to the Jewish people, they're going to be blessed. And I think America is blessed in part because of its blessing to the Jewish people. I, I see it in our lives, blessing them. I mean, we, our love for Israel and how he's blessed our family beyond anything we could ever imagine because of our love for Israel and for the Jewish people. Yes, yes, and, and many could attest to that. I think George Washington, by the way, would say, in fact, he was, he, he beckoned Robert Morris, his Secretary of the Treasury, this fledgling country, to go petition Chaim Solomon, a Jew in, in Philadelphia, to, uh, uh, to help because he was holed up in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. They ran out of money, but uh, Morris was an anti-Semite. He didn't want to do it. Um, but he did, and within half an hour, finally, uh, because of Chaim Solomon, and I mentioned this in the series, Faith of Our Fathers, mm -hmm. the money was raised to help retool and to reinvigorate with the finances the, uh, the Revolutionary Army. George Washington, if you ask him, do you think that there's blessings because of Jewish contributions and that we can be blessed because we support, uh, he'd be all in, he'd be all in. He wrote a letter, of course, that was referenced to give his thanks to the Jewish people, and he was an early supporter of the Jewish people, and there were many others. Do we, we have to be careful. I know it's, it's a fine line to me personally of if I bless the Israeli people, I get a blessing. I don't want it to be like you're rubbing Aladdin's lamp and a magic genie appears. The magic lamp is like, ooh, I was nice to that Jewish person down the street. Now, where's my money? It's an I, interesting... I don't, I don't think we should do life what's in it for me. It's not a slot machine. I'm going to put some gold into the Jewish loving, pull the handle down and out. I'm going to get a lot more coins on the other end. I just think, uh, you know, Jesus said, if you only love your own, how are you any better than the heathen? We ought to have something for something beyond us. Uh, that's the whole purpose of tithing, by the way. It's something disciplined. Uh, most of us spend money we don't have for things we don't need to impress people we don't care about. We use credit cards. We get ourselves all messed up with money. I think uh, a disciplined approach to life 
carves off a portion to give for the Lord's good purposes uh, beyond those of our own. And to, to, to love the Jewish people, to have something to invest in that beyond us, just the kind of person that manages their affairs that way, it's going to invariably pay dividends. It surely is. And I think back to God loves a, a cheerful giver, but it's from a pure heart. Instead of the financial reward, what can I get from blessing the people? The blessing comes in so many other things other than just, oh, I got extra coins. To that point in the Corinthian correspondence we'll where Paul gives voice to that. He's raising money to send back to Israel. The Lord loves a cheerful give or mm -hmm. give and it'll be given, be liberal. and He's not looking to get a new church bus for First Baptist Church of mm -hmm. Corinth. He, he's raising missionary money to take back to Israel with him, which is where he's headed to go bless the Jewish brethren in the land. That's, That's good. a good word. We have a new series coming up. We want to show you some excerpts. It's all about the land of Israel. Look to the north, the south, the east, the west. All the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Eretz Israel. It's called Adama in Hebrew, it means earth. Afar means the dust. And Eretz means the land. And my, how the Israelites loved it. Avraham loved it, Yitzchak loved it, and apparently uh, they loved a place called Beersheba. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, his nephew Lot, all the substance and persons they had acquired in Haran, and journeyed to Canaan. Now, Similarities aside, what's dissimilar is the fact that in this case, at least in the Genesis case, as we'll see, we're dealing with the real Pilistim. What do I mean by that? The real Palestinian so-called, according to history and various histories, were a seafaring people that came from Greece and from the Ionian Islands, a tall people. And we note in the Bible, in no uncertain terms, how they secure a toehold principally along the coast. They never penetrate far east. They establish a few cities and you have some Philistine holdings. Well, they came from the sea. Bible readers know of another man who traversed the Fertile Crescent, uh, beginning in Ur of Chaldee, makes his way along Mesopotamia, settles in Haran, Syria, and eventually hears, Lech Lecha, it's time to go. In Bereshit in Genesis 12, he makes his way down further, and here at Beersheba, we are at that southern penetration, not far south, the Negev. In the year 614, the Persians invaded the land. They damaged the church, but they weren't there very long. In 630, the Byzantines recaptured it. But just a few years after that, in 638, a new religion, Islam, sent its forces up to this land. Behind me, you see the Tower of David. That was a mosque minaret. It's gone between Christian, Jewish, and Muslim rule over the centuries. They also captured the Temple Mount. They began work on a magnificent shrine, the Dome of the Rock. That was finished in the year 691. The Muslims that ruled here didn't set this up as a capital. They ruled the city, but they did so from Baghdad, sometimes from Damascus, sometimes from Cairo. And the different armies from those different areas would clash here in the city often. 
In the year 1009, the church was destroyed by Caliph al-Hakim. This was one of the prompts for the Crusades. The Pope in Rome said, we must go to the Holy City, we must recapture it. And in 1096, Crusader forces landed down on the coast, capturing the city of Jerusalem in 1099. Frankly, uh, at the risk of sounding overly pessimistic, this is, this is a series I shouldn't even have to make. It is just so simple. It is so one plus one equal two, and that is that God gave this land to the Jew. And the story is played out rather dramatically after spending many, many years in a wilderness. The children of Israel began their conquest of Canaan, uh, leaving the base camp. They uh, have a, a, a struggle at Jericho right behind me. And then there's a campaign to the south that will go up north, and the end result will be is that the main uh, backbone of Canaanite resistance will be broken, enabling the children of Israel to take their inheritance. Friends, if we read the Bible, if we believe the Bible, let's stand up for what the Bible says and support the Jewish bid for residency here in the ancestral homeland. I don't want you to miss the points in this upcoming series, and I hope you didn't miss the point in this particular program. Scripture says that a liberal man will be enriched, and he who waters will himself be watered. God wants us to be gracious. He wants us to be a blessing. Amen? Yes. Amen. And we're excited about next week, we've been talking about Jewish people every, every week is, but the land of Israel and the blessings that God poured into the land and his people that overflow to us. Indeed. You Indeed. go to lots of places in this series. It's great. David Dolan He's will be with us. He's a journalist. He's wonderful, incredible insight and history. Yes. I'm going to jump in here really quick. I don't know how you turned on to our program, if you found us online. We are all about Israel, we're all about the Jewish people, but most of all we are about salvation and your heart. If you are watching this and don't know who we're talking about, his name is Yeshua, that's his Hebrew name, his name is Jesus. He loves you, he died for you, he wants to breathe new life into you today. Amen. Someone needed that, I think. Amen. Well, I hope they got it. Yes. Next week, we start a new series, Eretz Israel. But for now, we end our program with Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem.